All right, everybody, it is 10 o'clock, so we're going to get started. Welcome to this uh, chapter of Dominate Your Game University. We are super lucky. We are here today with Dr. Donald Azello, and he is going to be talking about cervical spine injuries and pain prevention. Um, so we're super excited to have him. Thank you again for joining us. And um, we will be catching up. Make sure you put your questions and things into the chat area so he can answer those. Um, and so I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Zello. He will introduce himself and tell us a little bit more about what he's got to say. So thank you, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hold on, I gotta adjust my headset. Okay, now I have my headset adjusted. Thank you very much, Lacey, for that introduction. As she said, my name is Donald Ozello. I am a doctor of chiropractic here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I have worked with the folks from Dominate Your Game for a few years now. It is a pleasure to work with them and it is a pleasure to be speaking today. My office is called Championship Chiropractic. I've been here in Las Vegas for about 15 years. I am the author of a book called Running, Maximize Performance, and Minimize Injury, which is a sports medicine book. I cover the most common injuries involved with running, and some that are actually not that common, but it is all about training so that you prevent injuries, or if you get those injuries, you could recover. From those injuries. Now, what I'm going to speak about today is neck injuries, how to prevent neck injuries and how to rehabilitate neck injuries. Neck injuries are extremely common in all walks of life, but especially common in sports. Now, I'm going to start with a couple stories uh, from patients who I have treated over the years. And you may laugh at some of these stories. You may listen to it and be like, this is kind of a crazy way to get injured. But these are a couple stories that I'm going to tell that have occurred, I've seen in my office. And they. the point of these stories is that, first of all, you have to look at the body as one synergistic unit and that you have to train properly and keep the body in a proper position while you are training. Now, the first injury that I'm going to talk about. This happened a long time ago when I first started practicing. I was practicing in another state and there was a young lady who came into my office. She was about 25 years old and she was in good health. She was in good shape and she had left-sided neck pain. No symptoms on the right-hand side. So I started, after she filled out her paperwork, I started doing the consultation and I was asking her what she was doing that was causing that her symptoms. And she told me that she was doing single arm dumbbell shrugs. And I said, okay, why are you doing single arm dumbbell shrugs? She said, well, I'm only doing them on the left hand side. I'm not doing them on the right hand side. And I said, well, why would you only do them on one side? And she said, well, my right shoulder is higher than my left shoulder. And my boyfriend told me that it is because my left trap is weaker than my right trap, so it is not lifting my shoulder up. And so I said, and how long have you been doing these? And she said, I've been doing them for about 10 or 12 days now. I do them every day because my boyfriend told me that you can train abs, calves, and traps every day. And her boyfriend was there, and so I was listening to this story. And I, so I told her to stand up and I had, at that time I had a mirror in my office so people could check their hair and the ladies could check their makeup before they left. I used to have it in my treatment room. Don't have that anymore because it takes people too long to leave, but I would have that in my treatment room. And so she stands in front of the mirror and she looks at the mirror and you could definitely tell that her right shoulder was a little bit higher than her left shoulder. And so I stood a few feet behind her and I waved her boyfriend over to come stand next to me. And so we looked at her entire spine, not just at her shoulder. And so I said, I want you to shift your pelvis 
to the left a little bit so it's in a neutral position. So she shifts her pelvis to the left, and all of a sudden, her shoulders are the same height. Her right shoulder is no longer higher than her left shoulder. And I said, one of the problems was, was your pelvis was shifted to the right when you are standing, and so that makes the left side of the shoulder move down a little bit. And so she looks at her boyfriend. She goes, single arm dumbbell shrugs. And we all got a good laugh out of it. But it was just something where there was this misnomer. Not She was getting information. It was incorrect information. And she was applying that. And she ended up hurting herself. Now, it wasn't a serious injury. I only treated her a handful of times, and then she didn't need to come in for any treatment. But it was just the idea of finding the correct exercise in the correct position for the body as a whole to make the body work properly and to lower the potential of getting an injury. So in that case, it was just looking at, okay, we had to look at the entire body. We had to look at the posture of the lower body of the pelvis and of the spine. And that was what was causing the shoulder to be a little bit lower. And so I gave her some corrective exercises, uh, worked on her neck a couple times, and she was perfectly fine. Now, the next case uh, probably happened about seven or eight years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, I had a, another female come into my office, and this was a female who I had treated uh, for other injuries. And she told me that every time she would do dumbbell curls, she would get a headache the next day. So she stopped doing her dumbbell curls. And I just thought it was, you know, kind of, I was like, why, why would that happen? So I said, okay, well, let me see your technique for doing dumbbell curls. Now I'm going to slide back a little bit so I can show you. And she was standing up and she said that she does one arm at a time. And when she brings up the left hand, she moves her neck towards the hand to watch it. And then with the right hand. So she was doing her dumbbell curls like this. So every repetition of her dumbbell curls, she was moving her neck into cervical flexion. She was moving her neck into rotation. And she was protracting her neck, which is moving the head forward. So after a while, she was still getting the benefit from her curls in her arms, but after a while, she started to tighten the muscles in her neck. So a very simple fix with that was, I told her when you do curls, stand in front of the mirror, you could still see the, the biceps and hold your spine straight and hold your neck straight. Do not bring the neck forward. Do not turn the neck. Do not protract the neck. Just hold it in a good posture and do your curls that way. And we eliminated the source of her issue. And it was just a very simple thing. She had told me that when she was younger, she was probably about, at the time, probably like 42, 43 years old. And she had told me that when she was younger, that's how she learned to do curls. She said she saw it or read it in one of the magazines. And so she had been doing this poor technique for a long time. And she learned a very important lesson on how to keep her neck in a good position while she was doing other exercises. Now, another one, this is a common thing that I see in my office all the time. I will, and this is something that we're gonna go over in a little bit. I will see people whose thoracic spine is curved forward. Now I'm gonna turn to the side, and the thoracic spine is the medical name for the mid-back. Someone's thoracic spine is like this. We have to bend our neck a little bit more to look straight ahead. And I will see people on their phones all the time doing this, or people playing video games in this position, people doing exercises where their thoracic spine is in flexion. So we have to be very careful of how we position our thoracic spine because you look at how the thoracic spine is sitting, and then we have to have the cervical spine moved in a position where it can, it can, we can see straight ahead and it can function. So one of the keys that we're going to talk about today is 
making sure that the thoracic spine is in a good position so that the cervical spine is in a good solid position. So those are just three stories that I like to tell. Uh, and like I said, it, it, it's kind of crazy sometimes how very little things that we're doing while we're training or things that we have been taught or things that we have been told that may be slightly incorrect that can lead to long-term issues. So that's just a couple silly stories that I wanted to tell about the source of some neck issues that I have seen in my office. Now, a couple things I'm going to talk about today is, first of all, cervical spine is the medical name for the neck. Uh, give you a quick anatomy lesson. There's seven vertebrae in the cervical spine. You have big, thick muscles in the cervical spine. There are several different layers of muscles in the cervical spine. Cervical spine motions are flexion, extension, left lateral flexion, right lateral flexion, left rotation, right rotation, what is called protraction and retraction. So those are just the, the very simple motions. What the cervical spine does, it supports the head and it moves the head. We want to make sure that the cervical spine is healthy. We want to train the cervical spine, what I call directly and indirectly. You could do exercises for the cervical spine. There are things that you could do on your own without any equipment, and then there is equipment that you can use. One of the pieces of equipment that I like to use, there are a number of apparatuses that you can use for your neck. The one that I like to use the most is called the neck flex, okay? And the reason I like to use it the most is that it's a very safe apparatus. It is something where you have to have two connections to actually do the exercise. So I like that and it allows you to do very specific motions in a very safe way to strengthen the neck muscles. So that is something that you may want to look into. Now also, speaking about the neck is we want to strengthen our neck. It has been shown in several research articles and I referenced those articles, I have the references here, that strengthening the neck may help to prevent concussions in sports. People who have weaker neck muscles have been shown to be more susceptible to concussions than people who have stronger neck muscles. And like I said, I have the references. Uh, we will, I will be sending the references over to the folks over here at DYG. And if you're watching this on recorded, then you will be able to see that where those reference articles are at and you'll be able to look those up. But strengthening the neck is going to help to prevent concussions. It, a weak, weakness in the neck and dysfunction in the neck is one of the risk factors that increases the potential of getting a concussion. So we want to make sure that our neck is strong. We want to make sure that our neck is functioning properly and we want to make sure that our neck is flexible. What I want to talk about, one of the things that I'm going to stress is strain, is uh, training the thoracic spine. Okay, Two groups of muscles that are very important in training the thoracic spine and making sure that the thoracic spine is not in flexion and making sure that the scapulas are not pulled forward because that is a posture. Again, I'm going to turn to side where if the shoulder blades are what is called protracted, they're moved away from the spine and the thoracic spine is in flexion. That puts the neck in a position where it is weaker and it has to work extremely hard. So we want to make sure that we strengthen the thoracic spine extensor muscles and the scapular retractor muscles. It has been shown in research that one of the key muscles to preventing and rehabilitating neck injuries is the lower trapezius muscle. And you may think, lower trapezius muscle, what does it have to do with the neck? Now, the lower trapezius muscle originates on the spine 
at vertebral levels T6 through T12, so it's in the lower thoracic spine. So you think about the rib cage, that's the part of the spine where the thoracic spine is at, and it originates on the vertebrae, and then it goes up and outwards towards the shoulder blades. The shoulder blades are called the scapulas in medical terminology. And what those muscles do when contracted is they pull the lower corners of the scapulas together. So that's what the lower trapezius does. It pulls the lower corners of the scapula together. And so you want to build strength and endurance in the middle trapezius and the lower trapezius, but the lower trapezius is more important. Because if you think about, if those muscles are strong, I want everyone to pinch the lower corners of their scapulas together. That is going to put you in a better posture, okay? Let the shoulder blades move forward and then pinch the lower shoulder blades together. And think about the positioning of your neck. It puts your neck in a better position. So you want to strengthen the lower trapezius muscles and build endurance in the lower trapezius muscles. Hold on, I'm gonna take a little drink here. So we build strength in the lower trapezius muscles by doing scapular retraction with the resistance at an angle that is greater than 90 degrees. You can do it from a pull-down machine where you're pulling straight down. You could do it from a, an apparatus where, say, you're at an angle of 150 degrees or 120 degrees because then it will target the scapular retractor muscles at a variety of angles. But the key muscle is the lower trapezius muscle. The scapular retractor muscles are the rhomboid minor, the rhomboid major, the middle trapezius, and the lower trapezius. And scapular retraction, again, is when these shoulder blades are pulled towards the spine. You can use isometric exercises. I always recommend to people that they start with a body weight exercise where you're just sitting in good posture. You could have the hands uh, resting on your knees and you just pull those lower trapezius together and you hold that. You could start with a two second hold and you build to a six second hold. And then you relax and you build to 15 repetitions. And from here, you could place the arms in a variety of positions. You could do it with the arms out to the side, you could do it with the arms out front, or you could do it with the arms overhead. And when you do it with the arms overhead, that is directly that will directly target the lower trapezius muscles. So we have our arm I have my arms are probably about 150 degree angle and you pinch the lower borders of the scapulas together. You hold that position. Again, like I said, start with the two second hold and build to a six second hold and do that for 15 repetitions and then relax. So strengthening the scapular retractor muscles, specifically the lower trapezius, will help a great deal in preventing neck injuries and in rehabilitating neck injuries. This is the idea of strengthening the muscles in the back. A lot of times, especially when we're younger, we strengthen what we call the mirror muscles. All the muscles that you can see when you're looking in the mirror or when you're wearing a tank top, you see the chest, you see the deltoid, you see the straightest anterior, you can see the lats, uh, even the, the subscapularis, which is on the anterior aspect of the scapula, those muscles are easy to see. So a lot of times we build strength and balances by strengthening those muscles and not strengthening the scapular retractor muscles. So it's extremely important that you strengthen the scapular retractor muscles, specifically the lower trapezius muscle. Now, next thing I'm going to talk about is the thoracic extensors. These muscles are very important. I've already done the posture twice where you're hunched forward like this, okay? If we strengthen, I'm oh, sorry, I was taking a drink there mid-sentence. If we strengthen the scapular retractor muscles, 
and we strengthen the thoracic extensor muscles. It puts the neck in a much healthier and much stronger position. So there are several exercises you can do to strengthen the scapular retractor muscles. And those exercises can be done seated, they could be done prone, you can even do it supine, but doing it seated and doing it prone, or you could do it in a kneeling position in the, or in a quad position. Those are excellent exercises to strengthen the thoracic extensors. Again, the thoracic spine is the medical term for the mid-back. The extensor muscles run parallel to the spine on both sides. Okay, These are called the paraspinal muscles or the erector spinae muscles. So strengthening those muscles is extremely important in preventing neck injuries and rehabilitating neck injuries because it's going to help to build the base that the thoracic, I mean, that the cervical spine sits on. So we strengthen the thoracic spine and that helps to prevent and it helps to rehabilitate neck or basically the medical terminology, cervical spine injuries. So it's very important. You can do isometric thoracic extension. Now I'm gonna to turn to the side again so that you can see my positioning. When I am in this position, okay, you let the thoracic spine go forward into flexion and then you bring the thoracic spine into extension and you hold this position. Start with a two second hold and build to a six second hold. This will help to build strength and endurance in the thoracic spine muscles. This is an exercise that a lot of people struggle with. And so you want to start with the number of repetitions that you could do comfortably and then you build from there. In most of the literature, it says you can build to 15 repetitions. I like when people do even more than that because we want to build strength and endurance in these muscles. We want those muscles to be strong throughout the day. We don't want it to be fatiguing at the end of the day, especially if it's something where you work on a computer and you start to lose that good posture at the end of the day because the muscles are getting fatigued. So you want to build strength and endurance in those muscles. I say you could even build up to 50 repetitions. Now, I've never seen that in any literature, but that is a number that I always strive for when I'm doing these exercises to build up to that number. And again, you start with a two second hold and you build to a six second hold. And you could do the thoracic extension exercise like I just did seated. You can do it in a prone position. You can do it while you are kneeling or you can do it in a quad position. And then you could also combine the scapular retraction and the thoracic extension. These are some fantastic exercises. There's an exercise called the prone cobra that you can use. That's an exercise where you are laying prone, obviously, and you go into extension, there's different levels, and you go move into scapular retraction and you hold that position for an isometric contraction. Again, starting at two seconds and then building to six seconds. Then also some of the things that you want to think about that do not directly affect the cervical spine, I mean that uh, not directly working cervical spine, but they do affect the cervical spine. And those are some of the postural muscles in the back that often get overpowered, that often get overlooked. And I'm talking about the posterior rotator cuff muscles and the posterior deltoid. These are muscles that we really don't train too much. We think about the rotator cuff when you think about throwing injuries. And when they work in the throwing fashion, they are actually working eccentrically. So these muscles don't get a lot of work when you are using the, uh, you know, just everyday activities. So we want to make sure that we strengthen the posterior 
rotator cuff muscles, which are the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor, and we want to strengthen the posterior deltoid. With the posterior deltoid, obviously, you could use uh, reverse flies. You could use the standing pulley reverse flies, both very specific exercises for the posterior deltoid. And those are going to help to correct your posture because they do work with the scapular retractors and the thoracic extensor muscles to keep you in a better upper body posture. So those are some very important muscles that we want to think about. So when we get into the weight room, now I described some basic exercises that you can do, some body weight exercise, but when we get into the weight room, you can do the scapular retraction with a pullover machine and you can also do it in the very beginning stage of your rows if you are doing a seated pulley row the first thing you want to do is pull those lower corners of the scapula together then complete the row and then move the arms out and then the last thing is the positioning of the scapulas where you're releasing the retraction of the scapulas. And that's how you want to do your repetitions. You could do inverted rows like that. That's a fantastic exercise, body weight exercise to really strengthen the scapular retractor muscles. And you want to be very mindful of your positioning when you're doing any type of upper body exercise. Just like I talked about with the with my patient before doing the curls. You want to make sure that you are keeping your thoracic spine as straight as you possibly can and keeping the neck in line with the thoracic spine. I don't want to see anyone bringing their head forward. I'll see this people doing bench presses and they start pushing and they bring their head off the bench. You want to make sure that you are keeping your neck in line with the thoracic spine. I also will see uh, people doing doing some core work, doing some abdominals, and they may be pulling on the head, okay? Uh, that has been talked about for many years not to do that. So you wanna make sure that when you are doing any type of exercise, you keep your neck in a neutral position. There should be no flexion of the neck, unless it's part of the exercise, obviously. There should be no flexion of the neck. There should be no extension lateral flexion either side or rotation to either side when you are doing your lifts and oh and no protraction again unless it's part of the exercise that you are performing so you want to make sure that you keep your neck in a good position while you're exercising that's going to help to prevent injuries to the neck so a couple things that I wanted just to summarize already we talked about strengthening the thoracic spine extensors. We spoke about strengthening the scapular retractor muscle, specifically the lower trapezius. I spoke about strengthening the rotator cuff muscles and the posterior deltoid. The rotator cuff muscles and the posterior deltoid, those are muscles that need to be strengthened to help to keep us in a good posture and help to prevent a strength and balance between the muscles in the chest. Basically, the uh, shoulder, the, the muscles that move the shoulder in the anterior and in the posterior. Again, with the exercises, you can do the body weight exercises and then you can get to the gym when you're doing your invert rows, when you're doing your seated pulley rows, when you're doing your pull downs. The first thing you want to do is retract the scapulas and hold that position during the repetition while you're bringing the arms, I mean, while you're pulling the arms closer to the body or if you're doing an inverted row while you're pulling the body closer to the bar. So those are some things that you can easily implement in your training to help to prevent neck injuries. Now I want to speak about uh, stretching a little bit. Okay. Stretching first of all you should never do uh, st slow static stretching before you train. Okay. You should never stretch a cold muscle but you can stretch the chest muscles and you could stretch the rib cage muscles and you could stretch the neck muscles when you're done training it will help to prevent 
injuries. So like I spoke about, there's a lot of times where there is a strength imbalance that pulls the shoulder forward. So the muscles in the front become hypertonic. They start to get tight. So stretching the muscles backwards, okay, stretching chest muscles will help to combat that imbalance. And when you combine that with the strengthening of the scapular retractor muscles, the posterior rotator cuff muscles, the posterior deltoid and the thoracic extensor, extensor muscles, it's going to help to improve your posture, not only when you're standing still, but when you're in motion and when you're exercising, it's going to give the neck a good base for that neck to function better. So when you stretch after, after you train, a couple simple things you could do is just lay down on the bench, let the shoulder blades move backwards and let the arms fall out to the side and you will feel a stretch in the chest muscles. Hold a mild comfortable stretch. You could hold it anywhere from five to 120 seconds. I think the optimum time is between 30 and 60 seconds, but you have to find the time that works best for you. And then you could put the shoulders at a variety of positions so that you're not only stretching with the shoulders abducted to 90 degrees, you can come up to 120 degrees. You can even be all the way up at the top and target those muscles. Another one that you can do is just put the hands behind the head and stretch backwards. Let the shoulder blades fall back down. A very good way to stretch the pectoralis major, the pectoralis minor, and the serratus anterior muscles. These are muscles that often get tight, so you want to make sure that you stretch them. After training is the ideal time to stretch. I know I, I've been guilty of it. Doing the, skipping the, the cool down, I know we've all done it, but it's something that's so important. You want to stretch when you are done. Now, another thing that you can do when you are done training as part of your cool down is just what's called a pull-up bar hanging traction. Okay, pull-up bar hanging traction is going to help to decompress the spine. And you don't want to do it with the neck flexed forward. You don't want to do it with the neck extended backwards. Just try to keep the neck in a neutral position. And this is going, and you could use a variety of grips, grip widths. You could do a wide grip. You could do a narrow grip. You can do a grip where the palms are facing forward, the palms are facing each other, and the palms are facing backwards. All those are going to target the shoulder muscles a little bit differently when you stretch, but all those are also going to decompress the spine all the way from the thoracic, the top of the thoracic spine down to the lower part of the lumbar spine. And what you want to do is put your toes on something, just very, very light. Put your toes on a bench. Because this way it prevents you from swaying. And when you sway, the core muscles engage, even if they're engaging a little bit, you want to prevent that. So you put your toes on something and it's going to hold that position so your body won't sway and the core muscles will not engage as much. So you hold that position and you stretch it downwards, it's going to help to decompress the spine, all the way from the top of the thoracic spine down to the bottom of the lumbar spine. So those are some simple things that you can do to help to build, like I was talking about, the base, help to make the thoracic spine and the shoulders healthier so that the neck is in a better position and injury will be prevented. So again, doing the chest stretches, doing where you're stretching the pectoralis major, the pectoralis minor, stretching the latissimus dorsi, because remember, latissimus dorsi attach to the front of the humerus. So we want to strengthen the latissimus dorsi muscle. Even though they're located in the back, they still attach to the front. So they can create poor posture. If they are too strong, they can pull us forward. A good way to check your serratus anterior is just stand up straight and look in the mirror and see if your thumbs are facing, let your arms hang straight down, see if your thumbs are facing forward. If your 
latissimus dorsi is tight and your chest muscles are tight, it will pull you in this position and your thumbs will not be facing straight forward. They will be facing at an angle. So that's just one very simple way where you could look at your posture to see if those muscles are tight. So again, stretch the chest muscles, stretch the latissimus dorsi muscles, and do spinal decompression hanging from a pull-up bar after you have completed your workout. Okay, now stretching, uh, stretching the the neck. It's a little bit different than than stretching some of the other body parts. You have to be very careful when you stretch the neck. In in any type of stretch or exercise, if symptoms are elicited or intensified, you want to stop that exercise immediately. Now, I'm not talking about the muscle fatigue that you get when you're when you're lifting. I'm talking about anything that can be bone pain joint pain, nerve systems where you have numbness, tingling, sharp shooting, shock-like pain. If it just doesn't feel right in the joint, then you want to go ahead and stop and you want to modify that exercise or you want to find a viable substitute. But when you're stretching the neck, you always want to hold it between like 5 and 20 seconds. You don't have to hold the stretch in the neck for longer than that. Okay, you want to make sure that you have your thoracic spine in a good position. You want to make sure that you have your your shoulders in a good position when you're stretch when you're stretching the neck. Just like any other stretch, move into a neck stretch slowly. Hold a mild, comfortable stretch. Again, hold a mild, comfortable stretch. You are not training to be a contortionist. You are not training to be a uh, circus performer, you are training to reduce muscle tension so that you can prevent injuries and you can rehabilitate an injury. So do not overstretch. Hold a mild, comfortable stretch in the neck anywhere from five seconds to 20 seconds, then release and move back to the starting position slowly and then perform the next stretch. If this stretch starts to elicit any symptoms or intensify any symptoms, you want to stop immediately. You do not want to cause any type of injury. We're exercising to be healthier and fitter and stronger and to function better, to go out and perform better in our sport. You don't want to get injured while you're training. Okay. So again, with the stretching, I know I said this before, but I want to reinforce Move into the stretch slow. Hold a mild, comfortable stretch, and then move out of the stretch slowly. When you are stretching the neck, you only have to hold the stretch for about 5 to 20 seconds. You don't have to hold it for longer than that. Okay. And when you're stretching the neck, you always want to make sure that you're not putting pressure on your ears, that you're not pulling on the jaw. Okay, I've seen people do that where they're stretching and they're going like this and I'm like, oh my God, what are they doing? So I'm going to demonstrate a stretch for this side of the neck. Now you can stretch the neck going forward. You can stretch the neck turning to either side. You could stretch the neck into the lateral flexion and then you could stretch the neck in a combination of motions where you're going forward and then you turn the head. Now I have the headset on, so it's kind of difficult for me to show all of those stretches, but I'm gonna demonstrate where we're stretching the left side of the neck. You want to reach over. You don't wanna grab the ear. You wanna hold light and use the hand as a guide, okay? And the, the side that is being stretched, you can let the arm hang down. You can have the arm in front. You can have the arm in back. Whatever position you want to do with the arm, that is going to, to allow you to target the muscles slightly differently. So you move into the stretch slow, and you hold a mild, comfortable stretch. And then you move out of the stretch slowly. So stretching is going to be very important. You can do your neck stretches after you've done training. I think a great time to do your neck stretches is when you're in the shower. 
you're taking a shower after your workout or you run, you get in a hot shower, you let the hot water hit your neck. You don't have to have it on pulsing. You don't have to have it coming down too hard, just a regular stream. And that's when you stretch your neck muscles. And it will provide some excellent benefit. So stretching the neck muscles is very important, especially when you combine it with stretching the chest muscles and doing decompression on the spine. Now, when we speak about working the neck muscles, you can do self muscle work on the neck. Now you can't foam roll the neck, okay? Some people have tried it and uh, I'm sure that they didn't do it for too long, okay? I do not recommend trying to foam roll the neck. You can use your hand, use your thumb and place it on one end of the muscle. Okay. I'm going to start at the top end and we're going to work this muscle right back here. Okay. And what you want to do is just move the neck very slowly. Okay. Through a symptom free range of motion. I'm going to repeat that through a symptom free range of motion and you use mild pressure. You don't have to go overboard. You don't have to use moderate pressure. You don't have to use intense pressure. Just mild pressure is all that you need to use. And you can use the opposite hand and slowly move down the muscle while you're moving. And this is going to help to reduce muscle tension. So like I said, use mild pressure. Mild pressure is all that it takes to help to reduce muscle tension. And you could also do this and then follow it up with the stretching. So that will help to reduce the tension in the muscles. And say one side may be a trouble area if you've had an injury there prior, then you could work on that muscle, work on that side. You always want to work both sides, but you can work on one side a little bit more than you work on the opposite side only if you need to. So you combine doing the muscle work and then doing the stretching and those two things together are going to help to reduce muscle tension. Okay, now strengthening the neck directly. Okay. Performing strengthening exercises for the neck is very important. One of the most important strengthening exercises for the neck is what's called retraction, cervical retraction. Again, the cervical spine is the medical name for the neck. So strengthening the neck into retraction is very important. Now, again, I'm going to turn to the side so you have a good idea of the motion. You want the thoracic spine to be in a good position. You, don't, you want the scapulas to be in a good position. You don't want to be down here. You want to be in a good position. And you could start by placing two fingers on the chin. You don't want to press, but you use it as a guide. And you should be looking straight ahead. The chin should be pointing straight ahead. You don't want your head into extension. You don't want your head into flexion. And you are going to move straight backwards. And you can use this as an isometric exercise. You hold this position for two to six seconds. Start with two seconds and then build to six seconds. It's kind of hard to talk while you're doing cervical retraction. You saw my neck moving forward. So again, the starting position, you could use two fingers to help you guide. Do not press with the fingers. We don't want to put pressure on the jaw. And that is going to help to strengthen the muscles in the neck. Now we got a few more minutes. So I am going to show you one more exercise. And it's a combination of the three exercises that, of three of the exercises that I went over. We're speaking about cervical retraction, which I just demonstrated, thoracic extension, and scapular retraction. So this is an exercise. I named it roll-ups. Uh, I created this exercise for one of my patients more than 10 years ago. Uh, she had told me that her mom and her older sisters all had a hump in the upper thoracic spine. So she wanted to prevent getting that hump. And so 
I designed this exercise where it's three different motions in one. It's an isometric exercise that's going to help to strengthen the muscles and hold her in a better posture. Like I said, I nicknamed it roll-ups because what you're doing, you're sitting in a good position and you bring the thoracic spine forward and the shoulders move, move forward. They put, the shoulder blades retract away from the spine perform thoracic extension, scapular retraction, and then cervical retraction. And you hold that position for six seconds. Again, start with a two second hold and build to a six second hold. So that is going to strengthen the posterior muscles of the cervical spine. It's going to strengthen the thoracic extensor muscles, and it's going to strengthen the scapular retractor muscles. So there's a combination of three of the exercises that I spoke of. Like I said, I call it roll-ups. Again, it is thoracic extension, scapular retraction, and cervical retraction. So that exercise is going to definitely improve your posture. It's going to strengthen the cervical spine. It's going to strengthen the thoracic spine, especially the upper thoracic spine. It's going to strengthen the scapular retract. It's going to build strength and endurance in those muscles and help you stay in a better posture. Now, also, you can do exercises like I spoke about the apparatus before, the neck flex. You can do exercises where there is resistance and you're doing the scapular retraction. Uh, it is a, a great exercise to do. You can use with the resistance band and then also you can do with the resistance band or with weights where you are performing cervical extension, cervical flexion, left lateral, lateral rotation, right lateral rotation. So those are exercises that you can perform with the resistance band or with a weight plate that are going to help to strengthen the cervical spine muscles. And whenever you are doing any type of exercise, you want to make sure that your body is in a good position. That's why building the thoracic spine and the scapular retractors is so important because it's going to build that foundation. You think about any building, there has to be a foundation. And it's the same thing with the neck. The lumbar spine, the thoracic spine, and scapular retractors are our base for the cervical spine. You build them, get them in a good position, then you strengthen the neck muscles. And again, you can use cervical retraction, cervical extension, cervical flexion if you want to, right lateral flexion, and left lateral reflection. <laughs> lateral flexion, I'm sorry, I said reflection. But you strengthen the muscles, always move very slowly when you're strengthening the neck, Always concentrate on the eccentric phase of the exercise. Move slow, control the motion, especially the eccentric, which is the negative phase of the exercise. Again, you can use different apparatuses to strengthen the neck muscles. You can use a resistance band, you can use a weight plate, and it will help you a great deal to prevent cervical spine injuries, and to recover or rehabilitate cervical spine injuries. So just in summary, having a strong cervical spine, having a healthy cervical spine has been proven in research to lower the potential of getting a sports-related concussion. Having a strong cervical spine and having good motion and function in your cervical spine is going to help you to prevent injuries and to re rehabilitate injuries in the cervical spine. So we want to strengthen the thoracic spine extensors. We want to strengthen the scapular retractors. We want to strengthen the posterior rotator cuff muscles and the posterior deltoid. You want to stretch the pectoralis major, the pectoralis minor, the subscapularis, the latissimus dorsi, and the serratus anterior. You want to stretch the neck, 
muscles and you want to strengthen the neck muscles. These factors will help you in the prevention of a cervical spine injury and in a re in rehabilitation of the cervical spine. So I want to thank everybody for watching today's class. Okay, I had a great time doing it. It's always a pleasure to work with uh, what I, I like to call them Team DYG, the Dominate Your Game team. Uh, if you have questions, please go ahead and let me know. Always remember to train hard, but train smart. Use proper technique. If an exercise doesn't quite feel right, then go ahead and modify that exercise or skip that exercise and find a viable substitute. So again, I want to say thank you very much to everybody. Again, if you have questions, please go ahead and let me know. Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Again, I'm the author of running maximize performance and minimize injuries please feel free to contact me with any questions that you might have my youtube page is just my name dr donald a ozello dc i have two youtube shows two minutes of anatomy and dr ozello's sports medicine report again thank you very much for watching today's lecture Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching Dr. Donald Dizello. We're so lucky to have him and work him as part of our team here at Dominate Your Game. Um, again, I'm Lacey. I'm the uh, head of sports nutrition here and just so excited to be able to provide this type of education. So keep an eye out for our future events.